Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm going to be doing a little technical video today for our motorhome vlog and it's going to be installing a battery monitor. I'll show you what I'm going to be installing. Um, I'll be installing one of these, which is a, a I think it's Chinese um, battery monitor, a lot cheaper than the, the Victron ones. It doesn't do as much as the Victron ones, but I only want a monitor to show me the percentage of how much capacity the battery's got on the van. So these are a lot cheaper, about 50 pounds, I think less than 50 pounds you can pay for these. If you Google TR16 battery monitor, um, these have come up and it's, so you see quite a few on the market. Um, the Victron ones usually I think range about 300. Um, so just to show you what you get in the box, obviously you get the, the gauge um, with a lead to plug it into. Um, you get a shunt, there's different ampages on the shunt. This is, I believe it's a 100 amp one I bought. It does stay on there somewhere. Yep, 100 amp, which is states on this little uh, writing on the side. Um, it has a little terminal for your battery connections and a plug there for the gauge to plug into. Um, and then you just connect the negatives onto either side of this and fix it in place. And that's basically most of what you need to do. Um, it comes with a, a metal bracket for securing it. And this one comes with a two meter extension cable. Now, depending on where you're putting this in your van, will depend on whether this is long enough and you just stick with this, or you have to make your own. And I've got to, I'll show you where I'm gonna put mine in a minute, but mine's gonna be a long way away from um, the shunt. So I've bought some extra cable. And the cable you would have to buy is a, a four core cable, a bit like this, to show you a good example. And it's got a screen. So it's the copper outer side is the screen, which we'll connect all up into one of the pins later on. So this is just an example of the cable that I bought. Now I've got 10 meters of this, costs about 14 pounds. Other things you're gonna need is some um, heavy, more heavier gauge cable for the earth because we're gonna have to, one side will be the van side, one side's gonna have to shunt onto the battery negative and that's gonna have to be made up. So I'm using 16 millimeter um, cable for this and I'll show you this later when I take it apart on that, but this is a stranded cable. Don't get the solid 16 mil that you get for meter tails on, on household electrics. Need a bit of heat shrink to um, secure it and put the crimps on. I've got a packet of crimps, so we get the right crimp for the 16 mil. And we need a, um, a crimping tool for that, which I'll show you what I've got, a hydraulic crimping tool, which are quite cheap nowadays compared to what it used to be. But you can get cheaper ones where they hammer the hammer um, a metal bolt down that crimps the crimps together. So you can look that up and do that way because it's cheaper. And then I've got a packet of these little white connections. I can't remember, I'll put a description below what they're called. Um, I don't know where I've got it on my phone. Oh, JST, JST pins. Um, I think that's the right name for them. Um, but like I say, I'll put a description on the, the link below. So this is allows me to make up that longer cable. I'll have to solder the, one, um, one of these plugs onto the cable that I've got. So I end up making up the connections like this one um, to be able to extend the cable. So that's basically, I believe, most of what you need. So I'll show you now what I'm gonna do. And the first thing, oh, I'll show you where I'm gonna put everything and stuff. And then um, the first thing I'll be doing is running that cable from my battery, which is under my passenger seat, up to where I wanna put the controls. Oh, one last thing you do need. Well, I'll show you in a minute, because only, only it depends on where you put it, is that I'm gonna put a Perspex panel in. But I'll show you that in a minute. Right, so I've got an Adria twin van. So my battery for the leisure battery is under the pa passenger seat here. So for my control for the panel, I'm gonna be putting my meter hopefully up here. I'm hopefully gonna be able to put it here, see how we get on. Now this Webster, Webstow control pan, uh, controller here is for my heating, which has been disconnected because I've now got a more smarter um, digital um, connection in the back bedroom compartment. So this doesn't actually do anything now. And this is my water heater. So my idea now is this is the black plastic I said about. I bought a six, uh, five millimeter or four millimeter um, Perspex on eBay for a few quid. Um, it's to take this off, see if I can move this along. I've got about a finger length there, I can move it along. Um, I can also bring the plastic right up against this one, so I'll get a bit extra room. I only need a few more millimeters, so that this gauge will then fit in there. You can see, looking at it, it's just about gonna fit in there. So that's one thing I've got to do is fit that in there. So my first job is gonna be running that five mil small cable which I said about the one that this one the control cable that I bought I'm gonna to have to run that from here I'm gonna go down under there try and get it up here and up to this part 
first and then we're going to look at taking the seat out um, to start installing the shunt all right so run the communication cable up i've taken out this panel here which is only a couple of screws which gives you access to the back here and then it'll also allow me to go through that way to the control panels and then there's a little screw here and if you pop the light which gives you easy access um, you can pull this away a little bit um, and then this lock pulls away slightly so you can get the cable run down here quite easily down the bottom here down the bottom here is the area which they say is the fuses there um, is this black box part it says fuse 12 volt on the side and you've got your step light there's two screws on this side um, and two screws the other side on the drivers if you open the driver's door then that just pulls out quite easily this gives you easy access then to get this communication down through here and under the floor and so far I'm up to here um, just the back of the driver's seat where the electrical connections are and then it should be an easy one to get through um, under here I haven't done it yet but I'm hopefully being able to push through under the floor um, there is this rubber trim which could come off um, but in here is the ducting for the heating so I don't want to run anything through there because of the temperature that the cable will get to Right, so as I was hoping I've been able to push this under the floor here and you can see I'm moving it and it's pushed all the way through quite easily just taking this little trim off a little bit so I can get access to this underneath the passenger seat um, so it's just a matter of pulling this through and then I'll be into the passenger seat area the next things I'm going to need to do is to take this passenger seat out um, it shouldn't be too hard apart from the weight to get out it's held in as I can show you in a minute it's held in by allen bolts you can see there's two here um, there's two the other side there's I think there's one at the front and if you spin the chair around you see where I've got the hole here um, that allows you to take this one out which is a locking uh, well it's a sort of a stop one it's quite a big bolt there I don't know if you can see it you see it when you get out um, you have to line it up with this hole so that when you undo this it'll come out through that hole so I'll take that out and show you there you go that just comes out like that so that's the one that locks the chair in position when you put it into driving position so that's one of the most awkward ones out of all of them to get out the rest of them now I'll just have to move the chair around a bit at a time to line it up so I can get to the hole, uh, the bolts to take them all out so that's what I'm going to do now alright so once you've got the star bolts out I've taken out there's uh, two at the back one here same the other side plus that retaining one I said about you need to take this panel off three screws so we can get to this see this um, welded spot here this uh, a bolt that's been welded in so there's a nut on the other side and that's a 30mm nut undo that and hopefully then the seat should be free to come out right so that's the seat out like I say there's a few bolts to get the seat out there's probably different ways of getting it out you could probably undo the, the base part and take this out as well there's different ways of taking things out I mean it wasn't too hard to take it out of the way I've done and I've got the seat out of the actual van and put it into my garage so it's right out of the way then um, so this gives you an insight of what it looks like under the battery compartment you can see you've got space for two batteries in here and there's a clamp down there and enough space easily to get another battery in here the cable loom that's going over here is to the isolation switch when you take your seat out um, there's one plug here that you'll have to unplug um, which is I don't know what controls that's probably the electrical controls on the seat for something I haven't looked into that um, and there's also an earth strap on the seat right so I've decided I'm going to be screwing this in place over here um, purely because it's easy access at the moment it allowed me to run this cable earth cable in um, put a loop in for the new earth cables come up to here um, and keep enough on slack on it so I could move it if I need to depending on what battery I get in the future one of the other things that we need to connect is the B pluses to here um, it's one cable from from this terminal green terminal bar here to your positive on your ledger battery um, which I'm gonna have to put for a fuse inline fuse um, and these it doesn't matter what one you use these are both connected together so any cable from here to, to the to the positive in the battery so I'm going to run I'm going to connect this cable up first before I screw this in position because it's obviously going to be a bit awkward when it's in there to get that to that terminal bar um, so we get on with that for now and get that fixed in place all right guys so going about a crimping tool I was talking about earlier this is the crimping tool that I bought which is a hydraulic crimping tool um, I believe it's only 25 quid depending on how much you want to spend you can get the hammer ones I said about 
and you just change the dies on these depending on what size crimp you're doing and I've got 16 dies in there for the cable I'm going to be doing and for the cable like I said it's a multi stranded cable it's battery they usually sell them 60 millimeter battery connection cables if you look that up or it's just 60 millimeter yeah, um, vehicle um, cables rather than the don't want to get the uh, meter towels so you don't want 240 volt meter towels because they're more solid copper and they can break with the vibration of the car and then uh, I've got an SC16 crimp which fits nicely into there there you go the cable fits nicely into there it's just a matter of now get it into turn this on get it in place it's a multi-handed job and just pinch it in the claws so it holds the crimp make sure it's in there properly straight as I can get it and then just pump it up so it's got a nice tight fit there Right, so there you go, that's my earth cable connected up and crimped up and heat shrinked. Um, and there's the ones that were connected to the battery originally and connected down to here. If I've this is the P minus side of the shunt, um, and this is the B minus side of the shunt. Don't make sure you don't over tighten these connections because you will strip them quite easily. These are only brass connections, so they don't need to be over tightened. One thing to mention before you disconnect your earths and do all this you can operate your isolation switch which will isolate the positive to your van from your leisure battery it just to stop any spikes when you're undoing this and it's arcing across or if it does arc um, the sort of electronic spike from that could damage other parts of the van so when you've got it all connected up turn your power spine and then just check that your van everything in your van works okay I've just done my check and all the pump and the display and everything's working as it should do next is going to be connecting up this positive cable but before I do that I'm gonna make up my main plug for this which is gonna have to be a solder connection I guess a soldering iron out um, to for the control volt wire up to the main panel so I'm gonna do that next all right so I've made up the little tiny um, connections for the control wire which will now be pushed into here hopefully if it all goes well quite a fiddly job this so um, I haven't got the best of crimp tools to crimp these together so I've bent them over the ends and I've soldered each one in and hopefully now I can push these into here as you can see the screen cable I take, took all the screens off each one wind, wind it all together and then sold it onto one of the crimp cables there alright so there you go that's the plug made up um, they just push in these connections once you've crimped them up or soldered them up like I've done you just push them in a little pin and they will stay in place and you can see I've got red, red black um, earth cable or screen cable um, yellow and white um, and they've got red blacks uh, screen cable yellow and green so as long as I do exactly the same the other end which is up by the control panel everything should hopefully be okay so and all we need to do down here now is to plug that into here so that seems to have gone in okay uh, what I'll do now is I'll strip the other end and continuity check these pins through to make sure that they've all gone in properly and there's no short circuits Right, so I finished off making up this plug up this end, coming through the panel, as you can see. A um, bit more awkward this plug because it isn't quite the right plug for this connection, but it works and it does fit in there tightly enough. Worst case scenario, if you're having trouble with this, you might have to solder each cable in individually and heat shrink over them. Um, but for me, it works. Um, next thing was to run, remember that B positive brown cable, I bought it through here and I've just connected it into a positive here. Now this is only temporary because I've got to get an inline fuse on this, which I haven't got yet on there on order. So I'll be disconnecting this tonight, I'm just doing this for to make sure the system works before I start putting things back together and making panels up. So that's everything connected and plugged down there, it's connected into the shunt. The negatives are connected across the shunt to the battery. Um, the positive to give it a power supply that gives a supply to the gauge um, this connection is done and the gauge is plugged in and as you can see the if you can see this in the sun the gauge is actually showing 0 0.06 of an amp I haven't done any setup on this and I'm not intending to do any setup at the moment so it's not going to give a percentage of the battery or anything because my next job is going to be to disconnect this and make up this panel to get it fitted in place and then go through the setup procedure on this Right, so I've just finished doing the, the 
panel. Um, as you can see, it's nicely installed now. New panel been put in, it's just slightly bigger, um, but fits quite nicely, and it's all done. I put a temporary fuse, spade fuse in the power supply um, because I haven't got the inline fuses yet, but that'll do for now. I'll put a bit of tape around that, so um, they'll be here hopefully this week. Um, my battery is being charging now for about two or three days, so it should be fully charged for, for the maximum charge I can get in it. Now the control panel is all fitted nicely and it's working, we need to set up the control panel so that it knows what size batteries we've got on the van. Um, I've temporarily set it up to a 73 hour, hour battery just to show you how it works um, and then we'll set it up for the batteries I've got. So as you can see it's got 73 amp hours here and if I push the percentage sign it's 100% charged because the batteries are fully charged but it's not showing the right amp hours on there. Um, so the first thing you need to do is push the middle button until you get to the amp hour sign and then hold it in for three seconds so it starts flashing and then you can use the left or right buttons to bring this ampage up or down to suit the battery ampage of your van mine's 100 amp hour so i'll bring this up to 100 amp hour once that's done push the middle button again and then push the percentage button on the side and it's saying 73 amp hours but push it again and hold it in and it goes 100% now and if I push the middle button back again so it goes amp hours we're on a 100 amp hours so you can see if it's set up wrong how you can change it now and you can set this amp hours to whatever you want I mean I've got a 100 amp hour battery and I'm saying that 100% gauge is a 100 amp hours on this gauge um, you could lower that down to whatever settings you want for your battery. Um, you can then go on to volts, if I push the volt button, so I'm showing the volts, I can then hold the middle button again for set button. And we can now set it set at one volt at the moment, so we can set this voltage to a voltage um, that we say is the cutoff voltage that we don't want, um, we're saying that it's a dead battery. But reading the manual, no one usually sets this up. So I'm going to leave that as one volt. If battery's at one volt, obviously it's dead. But you could set that to a, a setting for your batteries to show that it's de dead batteries. Um, and that's basically set up now. If I push the volt button, it shows the voltage. If I push the percentage button, it shows how much percentage capacity I've got in my batteries. And if I push the middle button, it shows you how much current that I'm pulling out of my van at the moment. Now what I'm going to do is switch on the van and then I'm going to go and turn the electrics off because we're on mains at the moment so then put some loads on so we can show this um, working on load and how much load it is before I do that you can see how the screen's gone dark at the moment um, and it'll always go dark all the time it's not charging or discharging and you'll see in a minute when it's pulling current out or charging this will start to light up right so I've put as many devices as I can within the van I've got my fridge on my TV's switched on, I'll just turn the TV actually on. Bring the current up a bit maybe. Yep, yeah, that brings it up a bit more. So I've got the TV on, I've got the fridge on, I've got all the lights in the van are on. Um, it's not many more things I can plug in 12 volt wise, apart from running the water pump. And you can see it's showing me I'm putting 8.4, it goes up to 8.5 volts, uh, amps sometimes. And you see it's got a negative sign there as well. And a negative sign is showing me that we're actually putting current out of the van, the batteries, rather than putting current in, so we're discharging the batteries. If I push the percentage sign now, you can see it's dropped to 99.9%, .9%, and over time, that will start to drop as I use more power. And I'll leave it a couple of, a minute or so to see if we can get that to 99.8 maybe, and then before I put the mains on to show it charging. All right, so I've turned everything in the van off, again so we're down to 0.7 amps so something in the van's pulling current we don't know i don't know what um probably might be a control circuit in the fridge maybe or it might even be the control circuit on my uh, tv no that's switched off as well so i don't know what causes that um you can see the screen's gone dark again because i'm not pulling any current if i push the middle button now um to see the percentage you can see at 99.8 percent and to, and i put it in the i just turn one light on so that's one of the little side lights, this little side light down here. And you can see them little side lights pull, pull 0.26, so nearly 0.3 of an amp. Um, so it's quite handy, this device, to see how much current in each individual one works. If I turn that light off now, 
it comes back and then I'll operate the bed, which I'm going to operate up, that's putting eight, nine amps. Going down, it pulls not a lot at all, really, going down. Let's try, try, I'll bring the bed right up. Yeah, it's not putting hardly anything going down. It's, put, it's less, less than, say, 0.6 of an amp, maybe. But it pulls quite a lot of current going up because it's obviously got the weight of the bed to go up as well. So you can see your bed pulls quite a bit, the fridge pulls quite a bit, and your TVs, and then you've got your lights and everything else. So it's quite a good device to see what sort of power you're putting um, on your devices around the van if you want to decide to build something electrical-wise to see um, how much power, how much battery power you really need for off-grid. Um, looking at the voltage, 12.87. We're not charging at the moment. Percentage, I'm at 99.7. So I'm going to turn my mains back on now, and you'll see it charging. Right, so I've got a plus sign now um, because we're charging. The meter's flashing on and off. I think you should be able to see that in the video. That's to show that we're charging the batteries now. That's why it's flashing. And you can see this bar up here is flashing on and off, which is indicating that we're trying to put current in. We're at 99.8 percent, and it should go up slowly. Current, we're putting eight, 7.9 amps into the batteries now. So this is how much the chargers are putting into the batteries because I've not got nothing switched on in the van now. Um, and voltage at 13.5 volts, so we've definitely got a charging voltage there. Probably bolt charge at that voltage um, and at that current as well. And that will slowly drop, it should drop fairly quick because we've got nothing. I switched the electrical system off as well because it, it shows you that when you switch this part of the van off, you don't have to have this on and we're still charging off the van's charger. See, it's, I, I don't know whether many people know that, but you don't need to have this on to charge your batteries. So 5.6 and dropping. Percentage 99.9. .9. When I've done this before, this, this will go 100% um, before it can't drop. So about one amp, this will go to 100%. Um, and this will keep flashing then until it decides that it's fully charged, which will take probably quite a bit of time. Being lead acid batteries, they, they take quite a bit of time to get up to the full charge. And as long as this device is seeing the current going into the batteries, I believe this will still flash a screen and flash a bar. Right, you can see we're down to 0.9 of an amp, and it's dropping quite fast now. Percentage wise, is at 100%, like I said, it would do. And it stopped flashing on the bar, but the screen's flashing to show that we're still putting current in, and we've still got a positive sign showing that we're still charging our battery. Now, this is one of the things I've seen comments on as well this screen flashing, and it's quite a bright screen. At night, this is going to light up the whole area, so that's one of the negatives people put in. So I am contemplating getting a um, a plastic, a very really thin black plastic um, circle here, putting a really small self tapper in there, and having it so that it can turn out, so you can see the, the dial when you need to see it, and then turn it back down. Hopefully, it should black it out, or doing something similar to that. But for now, that's fully set up. Um, I hope it's quite clear of what I've done. You can put some comments in the bottom pretty happy with that really I'm happy with the way the panel looks it fitted in quite nice and it looks quite nice with everything else around it doesn't stick out too much um, so yeah very happy with that and that'll be it for today we just leave that charging which will probably take me another 20 minutes of the speed that's going at anyway that's it for this vlog I hope you enjoyed it please give us a thumbs up and subscribe um, it gives you a good demonstration really on the age of twin and how to fit one of these panels it wouldn't be much, any different to fitting the Victron one um, because it's pretty much the same. I believe the, um, the still has a cable to the shunt from what I can remember, so it's, and it, it's got a, a display and a, and a shunt. A um, bit more dip setting up in the Victron because it can do a lot more, and it's got Bluetooth as well. But the, for the price of them, these little gauges uh, I think are um, pretty good for the price, good value for money. Um, my next thing is going to be sorting out the solar now. I'm going to get try and get some roof bars on on the roof rack. To make it make up a roof rack i'll be making my own to fit onto the full bars that are already up there um which i'll show you in the next couple of weeks if i get that done and then i can start organizing what sort of solar array i'm going to be able to fit up there um, with the space that i've got so i'll see you in a few weeks when i get that sorted